Good morning. Today I thought I would quickly show you how I uh, thread mark the bonus channels. Um, I could draw them on one side and then on the other side, but to make them perfectly symmetrical, I use the thread first. So I will make a little stitch at the beginning. And take out, uh, pull as much fabric as I need to reach the other side. Then I lay the thread on top of the other marking and hold it tight. Then I place my ruler right at the thread, take it on this, uh, away, and then make a very thin pencil line and mark the line with the thread. I'm making fairly big stitches so that I can draw in between on the other side. Now I nearly reach the end of my drawn line. So I pull the rest of the thread through, place it on top of the marking again, place my ruler again, just like I did before, and mark the second half of the line. Now that I've reached the end, I take out the needle, flip it around and there you can see where I marked the line and I can just draw in between. And then take the fabric, uh, the thread out again. And I will have my boning channel marked. That's it. Hello, I uh, just finished or, or I um, just stopped sewing because my time ran out. Um, this is the shape for the, the crescent shape for the elliptic hoop skirt. I have to sew at at least three more uh, stitching lines. It's very stiff where already stitched and here it's very soft. This will be in the back part so that um, the elliptical shape is possible. Then I sewed the side seams on a new uh, pillowcase. We already have one. It's an ocean themed or sailor themed uh, fabric. In the middle it uh, says seashells, seashells on the seashore. If I can read it on the hat and wrong side. Yeah, I sewed the side seams. Now I have to measure how long it needs to be uh, and do the buttonholes. But this will be sewn tomorrow. Then for my 1950s dress, I sewed the center front seam. There is some piping, but I, I'm i afraid I made it too big and I have to clip lots of loose threads, like you can see. So I did uh, close the front seam and the side se seams. I'm sorry. Um, I have to clip the seam allowance uh, 
and then that's done. For the skirt, I closed the center back seam and have to flat fold them. Then I secured the folds. I used some box, box folds and did uh, two rows of stitching over here to secure them. But on the bottom they are still secured with needles because I have um, the seam will be a lot lower in the front than in the back. So that's why I keep those. Maybe I need to cut some of the fabric in the back. Then I pinned the hem, but I won't sew it yet because I'm not too sure if I want to add horse hair or not. But um, if I can get some horse hair today, I might use that and wear the dress on Friday. But if I can't get horse hair or um, it won't look good if the hem is too stiff, because uh, it's longer than they would the the um how do I say it correctly? <laughs> Usually, nineteen fifty skirts would be just over your chin, but since I'm very heavy, I don't feel comfortable wearing it that short. So I made mine a lot longer, and I'm not too sure if um a horsehair braided seam or, or hem would look good on this uh, dress because it's also very lightweight and you would definitely see the horse hair. So I am debating about that. Then for the lining I added some regaline boning and I used it just in the um, in the seams on the side front. So this is the center front line and I used it right next to that so that the dress won't rise up if I move. Mm, then the lining is finished. Then I <laughs> sewed the next tuck. I have to, I don't know how well you can see, I have to iron it and then pin the third one and I am not too sure if I want to add one more down here because I am debating about adding some lace and if I use one more tuck then there is no hem left uh, where I could attach the lace so I will look at that or think about that. Next, uh, it's so long I'm so happy when this 8 meter fabric is over and then I have to do the main body and there I will add tucks as well. Then this is the rest of the um, uh, fabric uh, from the old Trinlan. I sewed up the long side and when I iron it later on it will be the back of the smocking I, w I did because it's moving around a lot and you can't see too well the shape of the smocking I did. And this will keep the shape. And no one will see it, so I thought it was alright to use this rosy stained fabric. And the smocked fabric is rosy as well, so when I wash them together, they will add color to one another. <laughs> and then I sewed the seams of the sleeves. So now I have to turn them inside out and uh, do the hem. I... Uh, cut them on the salvage, so I just have to put them up and no hemming, no rolling, just once secure and finished. Those I will have to, um, I guess I will use my serger, but uh, we don't like each other, so I'm not too sure about that. But maybe uh, my serger will be nice, otherwise I will do a flat fold seam. So I cut one in half and then fell the other one over it. Yeah, that's it for this morning. In the afternoon, oh yeah, I have two sleeves. And on camera, it looks like um, the colors are way more vibrant than in real life. Uh, 
which makes me think that I used the wrong side, but no, I did not. This is the right side of the fabric. Maybe not the perfect fabric for 50s dress, but I liked it, so I did it. And today, uh, tonight I will uh, pin and iron, and then tomorrow I have another hour of sewing. Good morning. Um, my desk is a mess again, as you can see. Mm, but that's because I piled up a lot of things that I finished. And so I want to quickly give you an overview. I don't know where I stopped last time. But um, for the pillowcase, I hemmed the bottom. And now I have to add buttonholes and buttons. I will use some see-through uh, plastic buttons like those. They are kind of small and so I hope to make hidden buttonholes. Then for my 1950s dress I hemmed, uh, I finished the hem by whip stitching it uh, the seam allowance down. Then I have to still flat fell the back seam. Uh, where I left uh, something open at the top. And uh, I guess you already know that I secured the tops, uh, the pleats. So this is going along. Then for the ruffle, I finally finished the tucks. I did decide to do four tucks and then I will hem this edge. Um, I will straighten it first and then hem it. I'm not too sure if I can add some uh, lace because the fabric is very thin, very sheer and I don't know if uh, lace would be too heavy for it. Then I will um, start ruffling the top part. I will divide it into eights and then ruffle each uh, part individually so that it will be a little even more even so that's that oh and it's ironed completely i think the best friend of mine so far was the iron i love to iron stuff so um oh yeah that's the bodice of my 1850s dress as you can see i pinned in the lining but I also, well, we have to look in between. That's kind of tricky with the boning and so on. So I did a lot here and uh, forgot to show the single steps. This is the collar. I uh, basted it in and then uh, sandwiched it between the lining and the outer fabric. So it's just basted in and will be stitched on with the lining as at the same time. But um, as you can see, I also set in the sleeves. They are not uh, sewn on yet, but I will do that. And since I sew um, this by hand, I did pin as much as I could. Um, and then I will sew it all at once. So the bottom part of the sleeve I pinned in straight and then when it curved uh, upwards a little for, um, at the end of the curve <laughs> um, for the top part of the sleeve, I get, no it's not a cuff, well for the top part of the sleeve I did uh, run uh, some running stitches. The, I made them fairly loose, then gathered it and pinned it in as well. But there is less of a gather in the back than in the uh, in the front than in the back, because the um, um, armholes are fairly wide in the back. So I did choose to um, have it uh, have a straighter, have less ruffles. In the gathering in the front than in the back. So, oh, sorry, that was my hand. 
So let's put that aside. And then I already told you that I secured the smoking. Oh, you can't look in between. Well, that I uh, secured the smoking on a white lining. It was the rest of the fabric that was previously my crinoline. And now I will... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I will stitch it on some backing fabric and then close it on three sides. The top part is left open so that the pillow can go in there. There will be the hem and the buttons. I will use the same uh, ones I used for the uh, sailor pillowcase. And then this is closed. And then I did a little more. Uh, here I did the missing stitches and they are all wonky. The bigger ones were fairly easy, but those tiny uh, rounds were all wonky. <laughs> that was not uh, very nice and it's really frustrating. So, oh yeah, then for the top part of the... Um, it's so much fabric that I don't know where the beginning is and where it stand. So there's the top part. I uh, pinned in... I still have to sew them. I pinned in six tucks. Uh, I hope you can see them. So there will be six tucks. And it's still too long, but with the hemming and leveling out at the um, waist line because it's elliptical, I will take a look at that, uh, or wait for that. And then the back seam, uh, I did with a French seam. Here's uh, how it looks on the outside. And here it's on the inside. I did decide to do a French hem, uh, so that it won't fray so much. And I did have not... Uh, closed up the back seam as I had pinned all my tucks <laughs> so it was much easier to sew a French seam than to uh, flat fell the seam with all the tucks pinned in and on the top I left a fairly big amount open so that I can adjust the highs and if I have to cut it here uh, and still had sewn until there it would be a problem so I left it open fairly wide. So that's how much I got. Then there got two new projects added to the list. I will do a quilt for a boy and I had a lot of old quilting uh, fabric cut that will no, it's not for a boy, but its theme is blue. So I had those still around. This will be a rectangle and paired with the white or with the blue. I'm not too sure yet. And that will be a baby quilt. Or size baby quilt. Then I had left... Uh, from mask making those fabrics. Uh, I'm sorry, it will take a little minute. Where is the other one? Huh, I should have pushed them around. So, I have those um, fabrics and there's more from the rosy one. And there are other ones that match those colors. I will make a adult sized quilt and a baby sized quilt from those. They got added to the list. And then I will give both baby quilts to my sister. She's not pregnant yet. But those will go to her for her collection. And uh, the last thing I did was take off the other ear from the bunny. So I have now two shapes of this. And the 
it is merchandise, it is a bunny from our high school host club, and so it's very expensive, and I don't get why they use such a cheap material inside the ear. It was plastic, uh, no, it was cardboard covered in plastic, and it was broken and already shredded into pieces, and I don't like that at all. It was so expensive, so I think they should be a little bit more... I don't know. I They should be more sturdy and don't break off. And... Uh, yeah. So I can now tick off some things of my list. I will show you photos of it. Oh, I'm sorry. I will show you photos of my list um, on the screen so you can see it a little bit more clearly. But now I can do cross off some things. So, so this is the list up. It's uh, crossed off it's for the dress. I only need to attach the. I only need to sew what I already pinned and then um, turn it inside out, attach the skirt to the bodice and hide every all the raw edges under the lining, uh, especially in the armholes. And there are little things to do on this list, the others have a little more uh, to do. And while I was uh, crossing off, I remembered that I did something for the crinoline. I attached the back pieces together and mark the boning. Don't worry, the pan will vanish if I iron it. And I'm not sure if I want to flat fell them or in the um, uh, pattern, in the instructions, they say just to zigzag it down, but I don't like that. Um, my boning is very sharp in the edges and will just cut the thread so I am debating about flat felling them which they are very oh, quite too short for and I did not add enough uh, seam allowance for French seams so I'm not sure what to do with them if you have any recommendations I would be happy and um, then in the last video I mentioned that I um, make the crinoline and the petticoat for Civil War era gown. Um, so this will be it. Uh, it's a blouse with uh, a tucked blouse with uh, insertion lace and then I have a bonnet and a skirt and a belt and I don't know if I keep the red uh, ribbon on the blouse because if I add a red ribbon I can only uh, wear it with this ensemble and if I do it in white I can use it in for other pieces but the skirt will be uh, shown in the bonnet or reflected in the bonnet because I want to use the same fabric but that will have to wait until I make the uh, I finish the petticoat. So here's a closer look on the blouse, how it should look. I want to do insertion lace here and I'm not too sure if I will add lace here as well. But uh, on the main part I won't add any lace. Oh and it's uh, off shoulder, it's drop shoulder style. Yeah, here are some notes I made for the petticoat, for the belt, everything, just some tiny notes. And if I have enough fabric left from the skirt, I want to make a jacket in the same fabric. Yeah, that's it for now, I guess. There's, oh yeah, that's something else. Um, that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. I hope you liked it. I know they're very rambly and not very professional, but I will work on that. And um, maybe you have some tips. I will watch Noelle's uh, video from... She's from Costuming Drama. 
she is doing a video with Bernadette on uh, video making in the next few days, weeks. I'm not too sure. I have to look that up. Um, I will write it down in the descri description box. Maybe I can learn a lot. <laughs> I, I, I know I will learn a lot. But um, yeah, we will see what's going on next time. And maybe I will have made a huge progress. <laughs>